right so this is the similar kind of thing we will be discussing today so first let's start with runtime polymorphism okay let me use the pen i am reading this line runtime polymorphism so when we say polymorphism so there are two type of polymorphism one is runtime and second one is compile time first one we are saying let's say we have runtime polymorphism so what basically runtime polymorphism is whenever an object is bound with the functionality at runtime this is known as runtime polymorphism now you you might be wondering like what is this bound why we are using this term are you getting confused with this term tell me that means uh, whenever we call a method with an object right yes 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 so bound or binding it's a kind of concept in java connecting a method call to the method body is known as binding or we can say uh, connecting a method call to its definition right like when we have discussed method so what we have discussed there would be a call for that method and there would be one definition so whenever we call a method the corresponding definition or corresponding method body will be execute right so when we say binding binding means connecting a method call to the method body or to method definition is known as binding right now when i say run time polymorphism whenever an object is bound with the functionality what i mean by functionality is with the method itself here by functionality i mean a method at run time this is known as run time polymorphism the run time polymorphism can be achieved by method overriding so we have discussed this concept method overriding so method overriding is basically as a, an example of run time polymorphism java virtual machine determines the proper method call at run time not at compile time so it depends like what object we are going to use so we already know when we say uh, let's say object o equals to new object so the object will be created at run time not at compilation time getting my po point at compilation time it just checks for the types if the given type is available in the class path or not right we'll discuss this using a practical example like how it works why it is called runtime polymorphism then there is a or this is also called as dynamic binding runtime polymorphism is also called as dynamic binding or we can have an example of method overriding and this is also known as dynamic method dispatch somewhere like you will be googling so you will find the same thing dynamic method dispatch this is the same concept dynamic method dispatch now we have another concept that is called compile time compile time polymorphism what is compile time polymorphism compile time polymorphism or static binding is something the binding which can be resolved at compilation time by the compiler itself is known as static or early binding dynamic binding we can say this is also known as late binding like there are number of terms that are getting used for the same kind of thing late binding late binding dynamic method dispatch runtime polymorphism these are all same thing 
स्टैटिक बाइंडिंग कंपाइल टाइप पोलिमोरफिज्म और स्टैटिक बाइंडिंग और अर्ली बाइंडिंग दीज आर सेम थिंग बाइंडिंग ऑफ ऑल स्टैटिक प्राइवेट and final method is done at compilation time you know static method we cannot override private method we cannot override final method we cannot override can't be we have seen this like if we if we have static method we cannot override if we have a private method in parent class we cannot override that in child if we have a final method in A parent class, we cannot override that final method in child class, right? So we can say these kind of methods call will be resolved or done at compilation time. Big why so? Because they cannot be overridden. But an overridden method will call will be resolved at run time. Like what kind of object we are passing? I'll come to that with an example. So don't worry. now next thing we have is why binding of static final and private method is always as static binding so static bind binding is better performance wise like no extra overhead is required why compiler knows all such methods cannot be overridden we have seen this like whenever we try to override a static or private or a final method we get a compilation error at the same time right so compiler no in advance like these method cannot be overridden and i can resolve these call as soon as possible as soon as we are writing the code itself and will always be accessed by the object of local class hence compiler doesn't have any difficulty to determine object of class local class for sure like it will be there in in local class itself that's the reason binding of such method is static right now we will be discussing about this with an example uh, before moving to the example let me read this line as well dynamic binding in dynamic binding what happens compiler doesn't decide the method to be called it it get decided at run time overriding is a perfect example for dynamic binding in overriding both parent and child class have same method okay now let me go back and run it okay so for example uh we have a class called phone okay and we have another class let's say smartphone all right in this phone class what we have in name okay and let no, me take we can see whiteboard only so you can see whiteboard only right uh, wow dynamic binding page yeah now now we can see at least okay so now we have uh, two classes uh, one is uh, phone and the second one is smartphone and this is smartphone basically extends uh, phone class okay let me uh, take it as default for now so we have uh, a variable called name and then we have a method called void ring and in this what we are saying simple printing like this is kind of nokia phone in our early days like okay simple phone like a phone can be a simple nokia like we used to uh use in in early 20s but the same phone we have which is a smartphone and we are saying uh, we have a method called ring here okay in in the smartphone class also we uh, have um let me just take a default name for this d 
default name and here we sorry it's not name uh, int sorry i'm taking it wrong it should be string string name we have the same kind of property here and let me take um, well or iPhone 12 for example I'm taking okay now these are the two classes we have in this class let's say there is some advanced music we have whenever we got a ring okay so let's say we have another class um, let me call it phone test okay main in main method what we have is we have created a, an object of phone class phone p is equals to new phone okay now what i am saying p dot ring so you can see we are straight forward going and calling the method from the phone class it, it would be simple ring ring or ring ring can you see it yes or no tell me guys now if i say a smartphone and i say p dot ring like this will be created at runtime we cannot guess like which one or which method call will be done by the compiler if if i say p dot ring so we are going to phone class not in the smartphone class but if i run this what we will get is some advanced music so where where this is coming from this is coming from the smartphone let me close all the remaining class like which are not in use so from here we can see like this call is getting dissolved at runtime getting my point guys are you there yeah that means uh, compiler will check only the phone and smart smart it will check a smartphone also or only phone class is there or not like this call will be resolved at runtime based on the reference we are going in the going to keep keep um, we are assigning to this so right now the reference we are creating here is for smartphone so this will be created at runtime only compilation time what happens like it, it it will look for the smartphone class like if it is there in the class path then there is no issue for example this is not there in the class path let me take this as a class uh, smartphone one so we will obviously get a compilation error right so at compilation time it will just check if the corresponding class is available in the class path or not we know that like when we say new smartphone at runtime what happens an object will get created and the corresponding response uh, sorry reference of that object will be initialized in this p variable so what object we are passing at runtime or what object reference we are giving at runtime based on that this ring method call will be resolved now are you getting this you mean smartphone object is created and that that object is assigned to phone reference variable p yes
so it is calling uh, in the phone ring method not in the smartphone ring method it's calling from smartphone method you can see this 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 is the definition inside the phone class make sense then why we need phone reference variable we can directly create the smartphone reference variable right yes we can then they, they, this won't be a concept of like runtime polymorphism this is a simple kind of uh, association in this i can say blindly every time this will be called from a smartphone right even let's say we don't have this class and we don't have this so this is kind of simple thing we have we are doing from last few days getting my point Yes, tell me, guys. Yes, clear, Anuj. Okay. So this is uh, the example of runtime polymorphism. Like the call will be resolved at runtime, not at compilation time. Okay. Now one more thing that we need to discuss. Uh, we cannot override a variable. We can just override a functionality. For example, if I say System dot dot print ln p dot p dot name. So what we are getting is the name from parent. Uh, sorry, uh, what I acha. It should be phone here, right? And you can see the method definition we are getting from child, but the reference we are getting from parent. So the concept of overriding works for functionality or for methods only not for instance variable or for data so overriding of data is not possible getting this point like we have default name in parent class we have name iphone 12 in child class and when i'm saying create an object of child class reference it with the uh, parent reference and we are saying p dot ring so what we are getting is the definition from its child but when i'm saying p dot name so we are getting the data from here not from here so simply it means overriding concept is only applicable for methods not for instance variables does it make sense Uh, if it is a static, why you are pulling static here? Static is a part of class. So you are saying for instance variables only. It's not overriding, right? You are saying like this. Yes. Right. So again, it would be same. It will be like from its parent class. Let's say we don't have this method. You can see we are getting compilation error. So overriding is only applicable for methods, not for data members. So yes, you are right. You can say uh, this is also a data member, right? Not for the instance, but for the object. Sorry, for the class. So yes, we can say uh, overriding is only applicable for methods, not for data members. Okay. Okay. Any other doubt? so here if you want to get the parents uh, child class data we need to create directly child class object right where to so, the previous example the printing of the variable name how can we get the child class data 
okay if you want to get that data then you need to use this class reference smartphone class reference okay okay yeah okay yeah. now let's go back and work on compile time polymorphism we have so for that we don't really need two classes we can have only one in this class we have a method called public void greet it says good morning okay we have another method called greet with name sorry if we say different name then it would be it, it won't be overloading right the string name and it says good morning plus name so there are two method right <laughs> in phone class one is greet and one is again greet but it takes one parameter right and if i say phone p is equals to new sorry it's p is equals to new phone and if i say p dot greet so I'm saying this one. So how this call will be resolved? With the help of this type or this signature, like what we are passing here. So you can see at the time of compilation, uh, there is no issue like grid method is already there. So let me do one thing. Mm. Let me let me make it parameterize one string name it will take two parameter actually name and string let's say time okay like it's afternoon or evening or morning okay good plus time for example plus double quotes your name okay and in this case it just say good morning and the name okay now when i'm saying p dot greet you can see we are getting a compilation time error what does it mean it means it's looking for a method greet in phone class you can see the method greet string in the type per phone is not applicable for the argument we need to pass an argument so let me say uh, anuj so compilation time you can say this call is getting resolved by which method at the compilation time it knows like to whom i'll call getting my point At the time of compilation, he knows like which method we will be calling. He knows we will be calling to this method. The JVM itself knows we will be calling to this method. The call is getting resolved at compile compilation time itself. And let's say if I write like this name and for time I'm saying evening. And I'm trying to pass another extra method, sorry, extra parameter. So what we are getting is the method is undefined. Like it's trying to resolve the call itself at compilation time. 
getting my point so that's called early binding or static binding and method overloading is a perfect example for this or we can say it's a compile time polymorphism can you see it guys in this we are passing the time let me take morning and the name is pravina i am saying like run this so what we are going to get is this one uh, let me know in case you guys have any doubt in this Oh, clear or not? Okay, fine. So, let me go back to the board once, and then we have discussed two things like compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. So there are different terms like the we can use interchangeably. What are those time uh, those uh, terms? compile time binding or we can say early binding or we can say compile time polymorphism right what what else we have yeah early binding and static binding so these four terms we can use interchangeably right these are same and example for this is method overloading okay second thing was runtime polymorphism we can say dynamic binding we can say late binding or oh, there was one more term that we can use dynamic binding yeah runtime polymorphism we have written that uh, runtime binding we can say these these terms we can use interchangeably and example for this is method overriding okay let me know if you have any doubt so far no doubt clear from my side on anybody else has any doubt feel free to ask okay now we will discuss about abstract class and interfaces okay so we have seen a concept of abstraction we just had a discussion like 
what is abstraction now the time is how we will be achieving it okay so to achieve abstraction so we are going to discuss abstraction in this topic we will be discussing about abstract class and interface so to achieve abstraction we can use abstract class and interfaces so interfaces that we are going to discuss here is will we will be talking about like java 7 version there are few changes that has been made in in java 8 so we will be discussing those changes later on like when when we will be discussing about the features of java 8 later on okay so abstract class basically to achieve or i'll say provide partial abstraction or 0 to 100% abstraction abstract class provides 0 to 100% abstraction provides 0 to 100% abstraction interface interface provides 100% abstraction okay so when we say interface an interface provides 100% abstraction now let's discuss more in detail what is abstract class okay so to achieve abstraction what we will be doing we will be using either abstract class and interface so whenever we are sure we want 100% abstraction then we can say we will be using interface but if we use if we want a uh, partial abstraction then we will be using abstract class so let's let me note down some points for abstract class uh, what is an abstract class an abstract class abstract class is a class that that can have that can have abstract method that can have abstract method plus concrete method now you might be wondering like what is an abstract method and what is a concrete method so concrete method is a method with body like you have defined a method with this that there might be some name for this method let's say m and there is some return type void and you have defined this curly braces so this is called body i think we have discussed this what is body so a method with a body will be called as a concrete method abstract method is a method which doesn't have the body abstract method we can say doesn't have body so when we say abstract method abstract method doesn't have body or we can say implementation an abstract method will not have implementation or we say body okay so this is the point one then second thing can not be uh 
instantiate it means we cannot create object of an abstract class for example if we have a class which is declared as a abstract class so we cannot create object for that class like generally what happens we can say uh, let's say we have a class employee we can do employee is equals to new employee that means we are creating an object of that employee class but whenever a class is declared as an abstract class then we cannot create an object okay next point would be can have can have constructor and static method but if we are saying we cannot instantiate it what is the use of constructor right so this is your task that you need to research what is the purpose purpose of defining constructor in a in a um, abstract class this is quite simple Mm, give some try otherwise we will be discussing this today sorry tomorrow yeah okay. actually uh, the purpose of the so create calling the constructor one purpose is creating an object and another purpose is to initialize the instance variables right that is fine but we cannot create object of an abstract class yeah we are not creating an object but uh, there are variables right uh, in the abstract class so we can initialize the variables how you will be doing that now the question is uh, by partially you are correct partially or i'd say you are 100% correct now the thing is how we will be achieving that purpose so through inheritance we will implement the by overriding that uh, abstract method uh, i'm not talking about method i'm talking about constructor you are very close you are going on, on right direction very close <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay uh in an abstract class we can have final methods as well like there is no restriction uh can have final uh, methods so you know final method cannot be overridden okay so these are the points like we need to keep uh, remember one more thing like whenever we want to declare a class as an abstract class then we need to use abstract keyword we need to use abstract keyword if a class if a class has any abstract method then it must be declared must be declared as an abstract class okay so these are the points uh, let's do a practical and we'll see like what will be the use case of using this all right hmm
So I believe you can see my uh, Eclipse screen. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, fine. I'm going to create a class. I'm creating a class wholesaler. Okay. Let me just rename it. So we have a class called wholesaler and in this class, we have two methods, let's say void books. Class fifth books and we have another method which is basically abstract method so when we say abstract method we cannot have the body abstract void let's say we have a method called stationary and i am trying to define the body with this method so you can see we are getting abstract yeah. method stationary in type wholesaler cannot can only be defined in an abstract class so first of all what we need to do is we need to make it abstract if you want to keep your class as an abstract class then you must use abstract keyword in the declaration now the second error we are getting is abstract method do not specify a body like it is not possible so it will be simply like this right getting my point guys so this is a class which is basically abstract class now let me take this test class right in this test class in main method what i'm saying just forget about these classes that we have here i'm saying wholesaler w is equals to new and i'm saying this so this is not possible you can see you cannot instantiate the type wholesaler then what is the use of this class like we are not allowed to use this class like this right so how we can use it we have learned a concept called inheritance we will be using that so let me take an example of class retailer right so what the retailer does it brings the things from or the books or stationery from the wholesaler so i'll say extends wholesaler okay now when i'm saying extends you can see we are getting a compilation error what does it mean let's understand this the type retailer must implement the inherited abstract method wholesaler stationary that means in parent class there is a method that is incomplete or unimplemented if you are making this class as a concrete class so concrete class would be a class basically in which all the methods have body or implementation. If you want to make this class as concrete class, then you must implement the method from its parent, which is the abstract method. So if we say like this, then there is no issue. Even we are providing empty body. The class is getting compiled successfully. Or if you don't want to use this, make this class as abstract. 
right? It would go here. Abstract class, retailer extends wholesaler. So whenever we say define an abstract method in a class, that means there might be some child class of this wholesaler class that will be responsible for providing body to this method or implementation to this method. When we are saying like retailer is there, but it's not providing body to this method. So what will happen? There might be some other class somewhere. Let's say class X extends retailer. retailer. So what will happen? Retailer is an abstract class. Then it will force the child class at this unimplemented method, right? So at the end, like if we are going to extend this class where we have an abstract method forcefully, or it will force us to implement the method. What I mean by implement, just provide the override the method and provide this parenthesis. Okay. Until we are not going to provide, it will keep complaining. So let me just make this class as a concrete class. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, fine. To keep you happy, I'll add the definition over here. Okay. Now I'll say, need some pen, pens. Okay. Now in the test class, we cannot make object of wholesaler, but we can create an object of retailer. And in, in last example, we have seen like parent can have object of child class. Parent reference can hold object of child class. Right now, what I'm saying, w dot, uh, w dot, let's say stationary. We are getting need some pens like the definition we have brought. We have another method which is basically books and we are getting that as well. Need some pens. Okay. Now let me try to explain how abstraction is coming into picture. Let me go back or even we can do one thing. To make it more understandable, what I'll do is in this class, uh, I'll not create this object here in, in, in main method. Um, I'll say There is a method called get retailer, for example, or print info. Let me just do one thing instead of writing it here. We'll be doing this stuff here in a separate class. Class demo. Okay. And here we have a method called print info. In this class, we, in this method, basically, we accept an object of wholesaler. All right. It prints the information of the object 
we have w dot books and w dot stationery okay now we have let's say a method um let me make it a static for example so that we can call it directly here we have a class called test right and in this class what we have is we have an object of retailer class right and what we are going to do is we are saying from demo there is a class demo there is a method called print info print that information basically right i'm not doing that stuff uh, here that was we were doing earlier but i'm saying call this print info method and provide the wholesaler object to demo class print info method and you can see the output is still same right so we are not really concerned about the output right now what we are concerned about is about the abstraction so how abstraction is there let me just clarify that okay so right now this class is complaining here so don uh, like because we have another class called test here so it's saying we already have a class test higher in this or we can just do one thing we can remove this public and it could be complaining the duplicate yeah already defined so let's assume the code is compiling fine what why i am writing all the code here like so that we can understand or explain the things in a simple way uh, where is my controls uh, okay so here in this example you can see we have a class called demo okay so demo class only knows to wholesaler it doesn't really know the retailer getting my point in this class can you see any reference of retailer any information from retailer no no somewhere we have a retailer class which is basically implementing the method of wholesaler class books there is some definition for books there is some definition for this stationary method but this demo class doesn't know to whom it knows to wholesaler okay getting my point so when when we are saying uh, print info from demo class so what what demo class knows it knows we have a wholesaler basically right what is going behind this wholesaler it doesn't really know about it like who is basically resp responsible for doing your stuff so when we were doing uh, we were having a discussion on abstractions we were discussing like we have a car and we just know like how to drive a car how the engine is working how the clutch is working how the brake is working we don't really care about like internally how they are works similarly if we look at demo class so demo class is only knows this wholesaler and these two methods and what happens inside in these two methods it doesn't really know like the definition is not here where is the definition basically the definition is itself uh, here in this case because we have provided the object of retailer here you can see that so for this demo class there is a layer of abstraction here like it it doesn't know the retailer it it knows to 
wholesaler internally retailer is working in background or in in behind of this wholesaler but it does no only to wholesaler does it make sense tell me guys no response tell me guys yes or no uh actually where where the concept came why the um, constructor Of it. Sorry. Where we can? Uh, how can we use the constructor here? Yes, we'll talk about that. For example, in your retailer class, there is a variable, right? Or let's say there are some instance variable in your. First of all, let me know one thing. Uh, are you agree with the explanation that I gave, like abstraction? How abstraction is there? Then I'll come to your question. i believe there is no question with this uh, abstraction kind of thing let me go back and let us let's explain um the constructor part right so there might be a chance like you have some instance variable like int x here in this class right and you want to initialize it so you can say uh, wholesaler Int x is equals to this dot x is equals to x, but you won't be able to call this constructor directly. We have seen in when we were writing in test, like we cannot say. We cannot right. We will be writing like this only. But what we need to do is we need to call this here in super. We have discussed that earlier. if you remember for example i want to keep x for retailer is 10 so this is how we will be calling that uh, does it make sense when we will be creating object of retailer at that time we will provide the information about x and that will get initialized make sense quickly confirm i have 3 minutes i have to